Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sunday Night Church. Amen. We're going to dive right into the Word. Father, we thank You for Your Word. It's Your Word that causes us that we even know how to relate to You in Jesus' name. Amen. What's religion? Religion is trying to relate to God in its own rules and regulations. What is faith? Faith is relating to God through Jesus in His Word and speaking His Word. So the only way we can please God is through His Word. Amen. So we're talking about God given authority. If you have a Bible, open it up to Romans chapter 4, verse 17. One version says, Call it the way you want it. Another version is, Say it like it already exists. The King James says, Call it what be not, what you can see with your eyes, as though it is. See, that's the way you have to do it. That's your God-given authority right there, real simple. So how do you receive Jesus? By what you say, and by faith you receive Jesus into you. God, Holy Spirit. It's your God-given authority. That's all through the Bible. In Genesis, the very first chapter, what did God do? He said it into existence. And did He sit back and say, Oh, okay, well now I'm waiting for God to make the manifestation. No, I'm really praying real hard now that, that He really does make the heavens. No, He just said it. That's it. That's what you have to do. What is it that you are saying? See, are you saying it just like it exists? That's the amplified classic addiction. That's a, a, a classic addition. That's Romans 4, 17. Are you saying it just like it exists? Or are you saying, I be in agreement with me that God's going to? Well, biblically speaking, a person can't agree with that because it's not the Bible. Although, people all over the world, probably 99% of even the body of Christ, people that call themselves born again, that's the way they pray. And then they wonder why they don't have the victory. Then they worry. Worry always causes death of something. So if you don't want something to die, don't speak worry. Speak what? Like it already exists. Isn't that good? Salvation already exists. You just plug in when you do Romans 10.9. Being filled with the Holy Spirit already exists. You just plug in when you ask the Holy Spirit to come in and and, and you pray in tongues. Healing already exists when you speak healing. I am the healed. If you're still praying, God, I'm believing that someday this is going to happen, then you don't know that you have God-given authority. You don't, you don't know it. If you, if you knew it, surely you wouldn't just keep praying out of your head. You'd start praying out of the Word of God. So what do you do? You have to renew your mind, Romans the 12th chapter, to what? God-given authority. God gave you the authority to speak to the mountain. That's what He did. It's like that one guy, he wrote that song. It's uh, Mark 11, 23, Mark 11, 24, right next door. Something good is bound to happen. Something good is in store. See? But what did He say? You speak to the mountain. Mark 11, 23, Mark 11, 24. That's where your authority is at. What does it say? It's just for you to speak to the mountain. It does not say for you to pray about the mountain. Pray about the problem. See, that's where a lot of people get turned around sideways and they wonder why God didn't do anything. He did. He's done everything He's going to do about your sickness. Now what are you going to do about it? You're going to use the name of Jesus or are you just going to keep praying God do something about it? He already did. He already went to the cross for your salvation. He already had the day of Pentecost. So you don't have to go to Pentecost to, to, get, the, to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in tongues. You can receive right there where you're at. See, whatever you thank God for, that's, the, that's praise right there. When you praise God for whatever it is that you say you have, but just like it already exists, just like it's 
already done, you're praising God it's done, then you're using your God-given authority. That is so simple, but people miss it all the time. All the time. And, oh my God, we got to get serious. Oh, please. Oh my God. Oh God, don't let nothing happen to this or happen to that. That's You're not using your authority. You're not using your authority. That's not even prayer. That's begging. That's not even prayer. That's worry. But well, you have to have faith. You have to use your faith part to get it to work. Faith in what? Faith in God's Word. Oh, I have faith in the Bible. What verses are you speaking? Oh, I just say I have faith in the Bible. <laughs> well, that's not going to get too far. See? Uh, so what do you do? Well, you're the one that has to decide to put your nose in the book and don't come out. Amen. If you don't know anything about this, then get you a red pen or a yellow marker or some kind of a, a marking device and get you a little card or plastic card or a little bookmark that's stiff and underline every single place that you read in Christ, in Him, inheritance. Why? Because it's yours. That's what you say. That's what you pray. So you, you can't successfully even use your authority if you don't know you have any authority. And then even if you know you have authority, through Jesus, you're not going to have much success without His name. So if you want to have genuine good success and victory 24 hours a day and seven days a week, see, it's not something that you just, you know, talk when you're around other Christians and everybody's saying faith, and then when you get off by yourself, you don't talk faith. You talk worry. You talk anxiety. You take care. You talk sickness. You take disease. You keep looking at your body or your bank account to see if they're healed. No, that's not going to work. It's what you not say one time, or even a hundred times, even a hundred thousand times. It's what you say all the time. That's how you live a victorious Christian life. The circumstances mean nothing. I had a friend one time who was believing God for some gas to take him and his son home back to Broken Arrow. And they was at my house. And uh, I said, well, let's just come in agreement that we got the money. And all they want to do is talk about, well, they came in agreement. They got really, really spiritual. Then five minutes later, they was talking about, my God, I, you know, I don't know how we're going to get up there. So you can't talk like that. So you can't, I said, you can't talk like that. You're coming out of agreement. Oh, no, I agree that we got the money. I said, listen to yourself talk. If you're talking, where's it coming from? How are we going to get it? One guy, he said, uh, this, this church we was at, said, yeah, but he's got 10,000 members. It's easy for him to, to believe. He said, it don't make a difference if there's 10,000 members. I mean, all they was believing for was $10, my Lord Jesus. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you've got 10,000 members in your church where you go to church at, or if you have no members in your church where you go to church at. Uh, that doesn't make any difference. God doesn't look at how much members you have. God answers faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. Hebrews 11.6 That's your authority. Listen to yourself talk. I have had people say, well, you know, if I'm getting quiet and I've already agreed with you in prayer for whatever it is and now you're trying to talk yourself out of it, me too, but I'm probably not going to talk to you. I'm not going to answer you. Why? Because it'd be sin. We came in agreement that you have whatever. Right? And then now that it's taken five minutes or however long it is, and what, you, you want to involve me in the conversation. Why is it taking so long? Why it ain't working? You really think I'm going to come back out of agreement? you got to make your mind up. What are you going to do? Are you the healed or not? Oh, I'm healed because I walked. What if you didn't walk? Are you still healed? You ain't going to rewrite the Bible. There's nowhere in the Bible that says, okay, you had no pain or you walked or you did this or you stood on your head. Uh, you must be healed now because you did this. That proves that I'm healed. No, it don't. There's no proof in that at all. But what's the proof? What does the Bible say? Are you saying what the Bible says? If you are, then you're going to walk in victory. Right then, 24-7. It has nothing to do with your five senses. Maybe you pull up somewhere or go somewhere and 
you've already agreed that everything's okay with whatever it is. You pull up and say, well, that just don't seem right. It seems strange or it seems weird. What are you doing? You're trying to go by what you see again. If you do that, you're just going to cause death. You might, I might as well tell you that because you know I love you. <laughs> it's just, I, I used to be dumb like that too. I had to learn. That's why I'm teaching. That's why God, God convicted me and said, you better quit that stuff. Do you really want that to die? Do you really want this not to succeed? Do you really want them to stay on drugs? Do you really want them to not be delivered? Well, no. Well, then you're going to have to do what the Bible says. See, Abraham, God said to Sarah and him, you're pregnant. You have a baby. She laughed. She didn't say, praise God, that's right, I'm pregnant. So even the father of faith <laughs> had to start lining up his mouth. Weeks went by, months went by, time went by, no baby, no miracle, no nothing, no healing, nothing. So what did he do? He had to start realizing, hey, I have to say what God says for me to have the victory. Amen. You have to say what God says about you. I don't care how many times you've messed up. I don't care how many times you've flubbed up. I don't care how many times you did whatever. That means nothing. You can watch this video a hundred times if you need to. And then you see, see, what happens is I teach along these lines. People hear it with their ears, but the ears that God's talking about is the ears, the, the ears down in your spirit, man. Not just hearing it in your head. If you hear it enough in your head, it'll go down in there and it's got to come out of your mouth. The same thing you're hearing right now goes down, but the same thing has to come up. If not, you do, if you don't watch it, your mouth will be connected to the way you used to be. If you're still talking death over stuff, even though you prayed and agreed that it's fine or whatever it is you're praying about, uh, then you start talking. When you, when you don't see it, you just start seeing what you... You just start saying what you don't see or go by what you see again. Well, you just, you're done. God can't do. You come out of agreement. You're actually cursing yourself when you do that. So you don't want to curse yourself. Amen. Amen. Receive Jesus. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive your healing. Receive this teaching and you've received all of them in Jesus' name. Call it the way you want it. Romans 4.17 The Amplified Version Classics, Classic Say it just like it already exists. See there? 1 John 4, 4. Greater is He that is in you. And the New Living Translation says, and you are already greater than them. Whatever them is, person, place, or thing trying to stop and mess with you. But no, you already have. See? Be that. In uh, 1 Peter 2, 24. You are already the healed. See that? Himself took your infirmities, bore your sicknesses by his stripes. You were. Were means already. Take it. Take it now. Don't go by your body. Don't go by your five senses. We're not body worshipers. Dear Lord Jesus, surely we're more mature than that. We're not, we're not seeing worshipers. No, we're Word of God worshipers. Amen. You have a great one. You have a good one. God bless.